Another question is kind of complicated to go. The common understanding of warfare is that groups of cavalry were deciding factors in most battles before Viking shot, especially in medieval era. Um, but everyone also says that horses won't run into a line of men holding spears slash rifles or bayonets. How are both of these things true, or is just one more common falsehood? Okay, so. Okay, so let me let's break this down. So, medieval armies. If we're okay, so let's, let's use France as an example. So, in this battle, you saw that I did have a line of infantry that got hit, right? And we had archers behind that line. In theory, they should be in front, fire, run out of ammo, fall back behind the line. The line advances, and then it makes contact with the enemy. Okay, then your heavy cavalry charge into the rear and sides. Okay. So usually what is happening at this time is that these cavalrymen, which is basically what happened in this battle, is the cavalry are going to go fight the other cavalry, okay? Once the, either side loses, in this case it was the English, once their cavalry decide to run away, you then cave in the flanks with heavy cavalry, okay? Now, this works perfectly well in a field, like this is a field, okay? This worked perfectly well, and this was the standard doctrine, was to basically have your knights fight other knights break them and if they if the enemy knights broke usually most of the infantry in the center are fucked so usually they'd run the hell away um because if your flanks are caved in and you see the enemy cavalry is coming they're not gonna fucking sit there and get dicked on um so that's gonna answer part one the warfare of cavalry was a designing factor in most battles before i can try to okay um and it depends kind of so Heavy cavalry can be a deciding, absolutely deciding factor, and basically was for most medieval battlefields. Um, apart, gen this is just generally for field, large field battles. Okay. Now, if you add any type, any type of terrain, you start getting problems with heavy knights. Okay. That's why the English fought dismounted is because um, they didn't have the terrain type specifically used for heavy cavalry. And that doesn't mean they did and never fought mounted because they did in the War of the Roses. It's just they would prefer to fight dismounted. Um, and what the English thing was, was to basically... They knew they weren't going to fight the French cavalry and win. Because they weren't. Um, so, they would have the longbows, right? Shoot off at a further range to piss the enemy off. The enemy is going to come towards them. The English then set up a perimeter in front of their guys, so they basically have better infantry. They get hit, and the longbows continue to fucking shoot them at point-blank range. Maybe get lucky hits, because you can't penetrate... From the front, you can't penetrate plate armor if you're hitting the breastplate. But that, if you hit under the armpit, if you hit under the neck, you can hit kill them still. Um, and the thing with horses won't run into men holding spears and rifles with bayonets is true. Okay, kind of. So, it is majority true um, that they won't do that. They will usually try to go around because they're skittish animals. They don't like to fucking face a spear wall. Now, if you send cavalry into a fucking halberd line like happened in this battle, they will die. More or less, okay? It depends. Now, a good, solid infantry unit of whatever that has good cohesion that can brace against a heavy cavalry charge will defeat it. More than likely will defeat them, okay? But the thing is, these heavy cavalry were fighting people that generally didn't hold together well when they got hit by a full frontal attack, uh, full frontal assault, um, and they would break and run. And when that happens, you know, you're fucked. So, that's one thing there. Also, another thing is that you can, tra if you have very, very, very heavy trained, like cavalry, or sorry, horses that are trained very well, you can even teach them, in very specific cases, to run into a spear wall. Um... The only people that could possibly even do this is probably France and Burgundy. Um, I don't think anybody else can, because they just don't have enough resources or train enough on their horses to do so. Um, and that's it. Basically, if you're going to run into a spear wall, you need a heavy trained cav, and you hope the other side breaks. Okay, cavalry work, heavy cav work amazing if you know the enemy is going to fucking break and run away. If they're not going to run away, you have a problem. Oh, I see. So when historians say something like cavalry charges decided battles in medieval warfare, they actually mean flanking charges in? Yes. Um, yes, that's exactly what they mean. So, generally. Okay, generally. Because there are some battles in which um, 
a frontal attack by cavalry did break the enemy. Now, generally, those type of attacks are very dangerous for your cavalry, unless you have a full advantage on cavalry, okay? If you're fighting somebody that's not as well trained and they're not 100% gonna stand fast, because let's be honest, if you're getting charged by 60 to 120 knights on force horseback and they're running at you, it takes a lot of goddamn nerve to stand your ground, okay? So most of the time they didn't stand their ground and they ran the fuck away. Or if they got hit, they would get hit and then they'd run the fuck away. If that happens, then yeah, the battle works very, very well for heavy cavalry. If you hit a line though, and it doesn't break and buckle, you're in trouble. Um, for frontal, uh, frontal uh, cavalry charges, which is why they didn't really work. Um, there is a battle in Flanders. We don't want to talk about this all the time, but there's um, a few videos. Um, uh, what is it? Kings and Generals did, I think. And uh, Sand Roman uh, History on YouTube. Both of them you can look up. I think Sand Roman did the one on Flanders. So Heavy Cavalry does have its limitations, though. So for the Battle of Flanders, or like basically just think Flanders, they didn't have any cavalry. They had no cavalry. Okay, at all. And they decided that if they're going to fight the French, the French bring a lot of fucking heavy cavalry to the battle, and these guys are very well trained, and they will fucking kill you. So, the Flemish fought behind a line, and, uh, sorry. So, the the Flemish fought behind, like, a river line. Um, a river, a river ditch thing, okay? And they set up on top of it, and they had some long longbows or whatever, archers really just to piss off the enemy. Okay? And then they had these guys with basically spears and fucking farm picks. Okay? So they're not going to do a lot. But because of the type of terrain it was in, they were also downhill. So the Flemish would be like uphill and the French would have to go down a ditch and then up a hill. So what the fuck did the French do? The exact opposite of what they're supposed to do. They had enough Genoese crossbowmen to fucking make the Flemish die. Um, but they didn't use them. It's just like the Battle of Agincourt. The French had more fucking Genoese crossbowmen and archers than the long, than the English, but they didn't use them, so it didn't fucking matter. Again, the same thing happened. They had enough to force the enemy to come to them, but they didn't. They thought again, stupidly, that the frontal charge of an of fucking horsemen going down a ravine and into the enemy line would break them. So they did this across the entire line. They had enough knights to do this. Think about that. They had enough knights to like, do this. They hit the line, they didn't have momentum, they were slowed down, and they were fighting uphill, and they got fucking killed. By basically farmers with flails and stabby weapons and spears. Um, and they got fucked, and their whole army just basically ratted after that. Because once the- so the thing is with the knights, it's, it's a trump card. If you send your knights in, and they run away, everyone's running away. If you send your knights in, and the enemy breaks, then you win. Um, just how that happens. I think I can show you some fucking uh, Flemish units. Let's see. And I hope that answers your question, Duper Da. So it is a trump card, but most of the time it is a flank charge once they cave in a side and then hit the enemy in the rear and then it's over. Most battles are like that. Alexander, so for example, Alexander in, Ma in uh, Macedon when he conquered the world, he did the exact same thing. His cavalry would fight the other cavalry, beat them. Once they're beat, he would turn in and hit the enemy's infantry in the rear and they would all leave. What, once you get cavalry in the in the rear of infantry, they leave. They run. Unless the unit is specifically highly trained not to run. And we're talking about, like, royal guards here. Royal guards, no, they won't run. Um, the one time this happened, like, for, I can give you an example of, is the English Civil War. Um, there was a unit of royal halberdiers. The entire army got fucking destroyed, and they held their ground. They formed square, and they held their ground. Um, they were offered a chance to surrender by the, uh, parliamentarians, because they're like, you have done more than what, what you, you have done everything that is required of you. Because remember, their entire army ran away, and they're only in a square formation, but they didn't run. Um, and they said, no, we're not doing it, and they got, you know, they got fucked, but. So, like, one unit out of the whole army may fucking sit there. Let's see. Flanders. 